Okay, uh, I think the first uh, slide is gone though, but uh, then I will just start with a small uh, retrospective. Uh, from my point of view, I started to work in the Maldives in about year 2000. And um, I guess the marking event was the bleaching from uh, 97, 98, which uh, caused a lot of mortality. Uh, and also uh, raised the question of, uh, I think the, we go from, from a, a time where the, the, the local sort of local threats like uh, physical damage and stuff, stuff could be uh, rehabilitated uh, to a threat that is much larger because due to uh, global warming. So we, there was a, a few projects like this, uh, that uh, I already talked about, so I'm not just going to expand on this. Uh, at the time, um, not having any uh, background or knowledge, I mean, no, much knowledge of uh, coral propagation, I started with the reef balls. Uh, that was already chosen for, for me, I didn't have a choice, so then I just uh, carried out that project. I. Uh, not meeting a lot of success, I developed the coral frame technique uh, from uh, 2004. Uh, and then it was uh, uh, implemented uh, mostly in 2007. Uh, from 2007, then we had a long term project going on with Four Seasons, which is uh, still uh, running to date. And so we started to manufacture the frames in Fuladu, providing some alternative livelihoods to the community. Uh, and then finally, uh, many other resorts adapted a similar technique. And uh, other techniques were then implemented. And I think, um, as uh, I mentioned, these uh, rope nurseries are uh, of particular interest. And uh, I must say that uh, when we started uh, this, uh, the coral propagation was uh, very much frowned upon by the academics. And uh, this uh, has progressively gone, uh, uh, I mean, improved in the, last, uh, in the last few years. So that's a posit uh, positive point for uh, coral propagation, I guess. And uh, the problem also in that uh, was highlighted by the 2015-2016 event, especially in the, G in the Great Barrier Reef, is that uh, it sort of uh, shows that the MPA approach uh, might be uh, insufficient in the face of uh, global warming. Uh, because basically we couldn't, uh, in, I mean, most places on earth, we can't do as well of, uh, I mean, we can't manage the reefs as well as uh, the Australians have done on the, on the GBR. So uh, it's unlikely to uh, work. Uh, so since then, uh, even though Australians are uh, changing a bit of their uh, vision on this and they are starting to give uh, more importance to proactive approaches. Uh, and finally, I'd say that uh, the, the, I mean, I, I'm, I was not aware of, of some of the relocation projects that uh, have been going on in the country in the last few years. So I thought uh, the project that we did this, this year was uh, the more uh, important uh, relocation project there. We did from uh, Gulifalu to uh, the Sheraton, actually. Okay, so yeah. yeah, so the coral frame technique, I think everyone knows, uh, we make uh, those uh, frames and we put uh, some small fragments and then we, they just grow. And yeah, you've got a, a timeline of uh, four frames. Uh, I mean, the same frame that has gone from uh, six months, one year and two years. We can see after two years that uh, the reef has grown quite nicely. This is a fast growing species. So. And then uh, we have also a lot more fish 
like all these little blue damsels are there. So this is the project we did, uh, this relocation project. So this is not, uh, this is not uh, propagation as such. We are just uh, relocating all these, all these corals uh, from Gulifalu to uh, the Sheraton. So you can see that the frame can uh, be used in diverse, uh, diverse uh, ways and uh, create quite a complex habitat. No, so uh, what we are doing uh, now that uh, we are developing the artificial intelligence to try to follow our uh, our uh, program because we've been taking the pictures of those uh, frames for every six months uh, for the last, I mean, as long as they live actually. Uh, and so we are trying to now extract, extract the information that are in those uh, pictures. So we get a computer vision algorithm to recognize the fragments on the frames as they are put here, and then we do, uh, we can do for individual frame, uh, a mortality graph like this one. And then the growth, the growth that is on the bottom quarter there on the left. And finally, uh, when uh, we manage the two, I mean, when we mix the two, we, uh, we can have an idea of the volume of uh, live corals and, uh, basically dead calcium carbonate have been created over time. So this can be done for every uh, single frame. I mean, we, we haven't uh, gone through the whole data set yet, because there's still some challenges. But uh, we have uh, on, on some of the, we, when we aggregate these things, so this is since 2016, we have started again after the bleaching to, to transplant. And uh, you can see uh, that's, that's uh, in blue at the bottom is the, fra the fragments we put. And then and in the, you've got the survival, the live corals and the dead corals that are just accumulating over time. Uh, so in these things, we can see some uh, important periods, for example, after uh, 2000, after the bleaching, we've got quite a lot of deaths. These are reported about six months later. Uh, so these uh, deaths basically, uh, mostly due to the predation by Drupella, because what's happening is after a bleaching event, uh, the Drupella population is still high and basically goes and uh, devours uh, all the remaining colonies, the survivors. So it means at that time, we actually lose a lot of corals uh, that are, is potentially some uh, heat resistant uh, coral due to the Drupella. So that's, uh, we should probably that's something to think about when we uh, want to protect corals, I guess. And, uh, and then, uh, yeah. And then this, uh, the, the, the lower graph is the, basically the volume created. So from those corals, we have been able to create about 12 cubic meter uh, of uh, live corals and then, uh, some sediment as well as some uh, dead coral habitat. But uh, of course, uh, this, the data, taking the data is uh, quite a challenge. So we have, uh, so we have uh, conceived this uh, catamaran to try to help us
Okay, so that's our effort into uh, trying to get more reliable data. Uh, that's a challenge. So all this is good, but uh, we do have the same issue basically with uh, our transplanted uh, fragments than we have on the natural reef. And mostly that's the temperature uh, and the bleaching occurrences. So you can see how uh, LT frame in 2014 has degraded down to uh, a dead, uh, dead coral habitat uh, in 2017 during this, uh, the, the two years. Uh, so basically same issue, we, we, can, we can grow corals, we can uh, do all these things, but uh, then uh, there's no safety from uh, El Nino. El Nino. So then we have to wonder what, what the coral reef functions uh, we can possibly tackle using, uh, using coral propagation. And to me, it seems that uh, we have a worry about wave, uh, wave action getting more important. Uh, around on the reef tops and uh, eroding islands. Uh, and we also, of course, have the uh, problem of losing habitat complexity and losing the sediment uh, creation. And uh, biomass production will be reduced and biodiversity will be reduced in the coming, I mean, in the future. We now have uh, a sea level rise that is measured at 3.3 millimeter per year. And uh, that is going to increase yet again. Uh, the potential for uh, sea level rise from uh, Greenland ice uh, glaciers to melted is about seven meters. And in Antarctica, it's about 70 meters. So it means uh, it's very high. So after that, we can wonder if uh, land reclamation is going to be is a variable alternative. That's uh, basically the way we are going. Um, so that that's I, I guess it will be okay for the population, but uh, of course it will be a big loss to the environment. We can't be we can't do land reclamation everywhere in the Maldives. It won't be economic economically sustainable, so it's, it's uh, an issue. Then, of course, if there's no more biodiversity, all this it will be a uh, loss of attractiveness in the competitive tourism market. And of course, we'll have decrease in the fisheries of course. So, um, the different, from what I've seen and uh, from our practice, uh, we I categorized the, the corals into different groups. Uh, the antigen group is mostly comprised of uh, Acropora. Vulnerable, more like Procylopora. They are a bit more resistant, but uh, still uh, there's a different, uh, I mean, important die off. Uh, and the, these are the ones that are more important. Uh, more responsible, I mean, more useful to increase the diversity, the habitat, the sediment and the aesthetics. And then we've got those near threatened uh, species like massive, massive species like varieties. So they are useful to uh, build the reef and uh, protect from wave action. And then we uh, fortunately have some uh, corals that are of least concern, meaning they are doing quite well in the uh, bleaching. And this is, for example, Montipora digitata in particular. Uh, Porati cylindrica is doing uh, at times quite nicely. And this Psamokora uh, also doing quite, quite good. So for each of those species, 
of these groups, I think we need to have a different uh, strategy. So the endangered species, uh, I can't see them uh, in the long term uh, surviving. Uh, if we don't, if we are not more proactive in uh, in uh, keeping them, and uh, the idea would be to create pockets uh, across, uh, across the country where uh, those species are maintained and uh, can subsequently uh, spawn and enable local recruitment. Uh, the 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 fact is uh, when we have a, a bleaching event like in 98 where uh, basically all the north part of the Maldives was uh, affected then it will take a long time for the corals to again be able to to spawn to, the, to recruit on those reefs because the source of corals is all the way in the south of the Maldives and so it takes a long time to recover uh, in 2017 uh, some of the central atolls were sort of spared, and uh, that is, I think, uh, much better for the uh, recovery of the reef. So out of all the methods that uh, have been, uh, I mean, out of the methods that have been uh, developed for this or talked about, there's the selective breeding but then uh, the issue that I have met uh, with this is that uh, when we, after a bleaching event, of course, we will only uh, uh, transplant survivors. And so potentially some uh, successful, more resistant colonies, but eventually uh, the next event is, uh, they don't necessarily uh, go through those, uh, the next event. And we have to see that, uh, <laughs> It's going to take a long time. I mean, and it's going to do those events are going to be uh, increasingly difficult to go through. Uh, now we've got uh, also a problem in testing this, uh, the resistance of the corals. And eventually, if we do find one, it's going to take a very long time to grow it uh, to a meaningful scale. So the shading, current prone sites, yes. That helps. Uh, we have seen uh, this in different areas. We have uh, used the water villas to uh, shade the corals. It means, like, when we, because the frame has this, uh, the coral frames, of course, we can move to some extent. And so we are shading them uh, during the, the event, and uh, that has reduced the mortality. But eventually uh, doesn't seem that it will be enough. So I uh, think we already have to go into uh, temperature controlled nurseries, uh, which could be implemented either on land or, uh, you know, on in reef depressions also, like uh, what I mean by this is VILUs, right? Uh, that sometimes are natural and sometimes made uh, when we carry out beach replenishment. And so um, I think we have to think of uh, already this technique, uh, I mean, developing a nursery that could be controlled, uh, that the temperature could be controlled so that we do find, we do keep some uh, of those endangered uh, species individual through the bleaching. Uh, and then uh, for for another uh, for for uh, an issue is the, the the of course disappearance of the Maldives, uh, if uh, or at least the natural islands, so uh, an increase in uh, wave action inside the atolls. And I think we have to try to uh, already find a way to raise the the, the reef crests. Uh, through uh, coral propagation. I, uh, I, I mean, I'm proposing, I mean, I'm proposing, I have a thought of uh, building the, the reef crest uh, using the least, uh, the least concerned species. 
Uh, the lee side of the reef crest is an important uh, place for the recruitment of fish. So uh, work on these areas would also help with the biodiversity to some extent. Uh, and uh, how to do this is uh, the top of the reef basically is a, is, is a crest which is made of uh, uh, broken fragments that are just piled up by the waves. Uh, when the sea level is going to rise, then those uh, this crest is probably going to migrate inland. And so if we have uh, more, uh, a wider, uh, shallower area in the lee side, then uh, the crest will not uh, sort of go down in the, I mean, like go down uh, compared to mean sea level, but uh, will sort of pile up higher and uh, still offer a better protection. So that, uh, of course, is, uh, I mean, that's something that I have seen in nature. And yeah, you can see this uh, small island there. And how since between 2016 and 2019, uh, this uh, Montipora uh, digitata has very much grown on two, uh, on, I don't know, on uh, these three uh, streaks that you can see. Uh, and, you know, that is completely uh, random. In a way, those uh, corals could have grown uh, in any area. And if we had basically transplanted them all along the reef crest, then we would have created a much, uh, a much uh, bigger coral, uh, coral, live coral area. So uh, how to do those activities? Uh, I am, uh, from my experiences that we, I mean, we'll need some source of corals to, to be able to do this in the large scale. Uh, many corals are threatened by development activities. Uh, so I didn't think that much relocation was going on. Uh, I made, uh, uh, Nizam showed that uh, maybe there are more efforts in that direction than I thought. Uh, so I think the government should have some, should put some dedicated reef areas to relocate those, uh, those corals and to grow them, to implement the controlled uh, habitat uh, or refuge areas uh, to, to keep the endangered uh, species uh, during the bleaching events. And of course, uh, this will not happen without finance. Uh, so the financing needs to be a uh, long term. Many people have, uh, like me actually, have been uh, depending on the tourism sector to uh, fund my activities since 2001. But uh, that is uh, not actually working really well as uh, I have mentioned. Uh, there are the, 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 the I mean, the experiments that we can do, that we want to do, that uh, have to be agreed with the resorts. And of course, these are not necessarily uh, the ecological priorities. Uh, so I think uh, the, the, all the projects should be compensated. Uh, I'm not really... Uh, I think this is overall now a worldwide practice that we have to have compensation for development projects. In Maldives, I think it's still uh, not very much accepted by the developers. Um, and even, you know, like, uh, so I'm, I'm mentioning that the green tax is there, but I'm not sure how the green tax is being shared and, and used for, for environmental purposes. I, um, I, I think it's used for other purposes. And then we have also, for example, considering this commercial harbor in uh, Gulifalu, the price for the project is one thing, but uh, the long-term plan is that uh, this commercial harbor will free the land in Mali, which will be rented for uh, a lot of money or sold. 
and uh, the, the the place in uh, Gulifalu, the, the land created in Gulifalu, will also be rented, or you know somehow uh, some some money will come from there. And I think it's a normal thing that uh, some of this money will be uh, in the long term used for uh, projects like coral propagation or whichever uh, the government sees fit. Uh, basically, I think the, the, the government agencies, you know, are still on the, the I mean, there's lots of people that are, they are my age and uh, who, who like uh, are onto this, uh, this thinking that this, uh, sorry? Uh, that the coral con con the coral project uh, coral I mean uh, propagation is not worth it, and it are still pushing for the MPA uh, approach. I mean I think we have a lot of MPA declared in the country. Uh, yeah, and so I think the government basically should uh, also engage more with the private sector either on a project basis or local management of uh, those activities, and in particular, those uh, controlled nurseries, those uh, places where we can uh, store corals that are salvaged from uh, projects uh, for uh, further use in the country uh, as have them ready, basically. Okay, thank you for listening. And um...